pleasant temperature right now. Yeah, it feels good. Still not quite ready for my feet to get wet, but <laughs> it feels good. Get in here, get in here. I don't know, I can't. My polarized sunglasses. I yeah, can't you see. can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see very <laughs> All good. What's up, everybody? I'm Eric Hansen. This week, I'm being joined by Devin, AKA Backcountry Exposure. And uh, we're going off into one of my favorite places in the US, into the Escalante area of Utah. It's Canyon country, still pretty icy in here, but it's, it's playtime in the desert. <laughs> it's gonna be a cold adventure. We're gonna have some fun. It's our Great. first time backpacking together. <clears throat> And uh, we're gonna go get after it. Let's go. It's cool to see the canyon walls start to really soar up alongside us. The canyon's getting narrower. As you can probably tell, we're stopped trying to dance around water. We're just in it. I love seeing the way these canyons evolve. Oh, the way that as you hike through them, they just get so deep and narrow. And it's just gonna keep getting more and more impressive as we go down. We'll start seeing alcoves and all sorts of cool features. The only downside is that Devin already feels comfortable telling me I'm the stinky guy. Yeah, I can smell you. Stink. I st <laughs> hey, it's only been like two hours. <laughs> And I'm already the stinky guy. That happened mighty quick. We might have problems. Devin, what have you gotten us into? I rolled the dice and dicey is what came up. This does look dicey. I have a feeling this is gonna be the theme of the trip though. <laughs> yeah, this, this is uh, pretty mild compared to what we've got coming. Uh, yeah. This is just the appetizer. Ugh. Why did I choose this? Why did I follow? You said we could go back. <laughs> and I said no. You did. I offered you a chance. <laughs> yep. <Ooh>. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So one thing that's pretty constant for a canyon like this. You gotta be willing to, you gotta be willing to go through some pretty gnarly brush. The tamarisk, Russian olive, all sorts of stuff can really choke you out. Whew. Like Devin says, the Escalante is not for the faint of heart. Quick <laughs> get out of it. We found quicksand. Really cool spot in the canyon here. There's like an old, essentially like this used to be a dam and the river used to come around this whole other way. And then in time, it just broke its way through and now it's like a little gate. This whole area is full of jewels. A little bit lower. Olive, man. Ooh, that's the that's some nasty stuff. Heinous. <sighs> Was that fun? <laughs> that is, that's the most fun I've ever had. Wow. 
That's a wall. <laughs> it's, it's like a wall. It's about to get real good from here on. So these canyon walls are really just soaring overhead. Some really cool features, giant rock up there balancing. And it only gets better the deeper we go. And uh, something I really love is this like desert varnish. These big black streaks or colored streaks that come down where the tannins of leaves and brush and organic material slowly over time will wash over the walls, leave behind these big streaks. And it's just so pretty. To me, it's just so engaging and iconic and I just, I just love it in here so much. Yeah, lunchtime. Ooh. I'm ready. These uh, river miles are different than regular trail miles. Yeah, 10, 10 miles in a day is no joke. It's all that bushwalking and yeah. We're doing it though. Oh. And we still got three, three more to go. A little PB&J action going on over here. You got PB&J? PB&J on sourdough English muffins. Oh, that is, that is rich, man. <laughs> the, the, the trick that I found was like, I got so tired of tortillas and had so many tortillas in the backcountry. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to eat another tortilla in my life. <laughs> and like, there's a lot of rebound and density that's like almost bagel-like. Yeah. With a um, English muffin that they don't really squish. That's in pristine shape. Uh -huh. The other hack is go to McDonald's and get packaged jam. Whoa, that is a hack. <laughs> <clears throat> I got a pretty dang good slice back there. Yeah, how does that feel? <laughs> Whoa, that went like... It's all the way. My, my calf muscle might spill out. It's still, it didn't Was go that deep. from like that really gnarly Russian olive that we were yeah. crawling over? Uh, dancing with? I believe it was uh, very poetic looking. I mean, that's, that is the most intimate I've, <laughs> I've been with a... <laughs> with a tree? <laughs> with a tree. <laughs> See that? Pretty good slice. Not many people come this way this early. This right here is one of the biggest walls I've ever seen. This canyon is super sinuous and twisty, turny and gorgeous alcoves. And there's just truly amazing like texture and light and it is so beautiful.
So we're getting out in more into the open here and we're pretty close to the confluence of the Escalante. So it's been a big challenge of a day. It's like ooh, so bushwhacky and gnarly and hiking in these canyons with no real trail. You kind of follow cow paths and stuff. It's very taxing. But you get to see places that most people don't ever see in life. And it feels really special to be out here, especially this time of year when it's comfortable air temperature and just me and Devin and really nobody else out here. So this is pretty special. There it is. <laughs> Devin and I have made it to the confluence of the Escalante and it uh, feels pretty good. I think we're gonna try to post up in those cottonwoods over there and uh, be positioned for another, it's gonna be a big day tomorrow too. Oh, and uh, we just have to ford across that. Not bad. Nice. Bad. Handled that like a champ. That water is moving pretty good, and it's pretty cold. Woo. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shocked it's slow. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, somewhere around here, let's camp. work today. Big day. Giddy up. Boom. How do you like your Canuck? It's amazing. Yeah. I've been using it for five years. Really? Not the same one, but. Yeah. And you're a Sawyer fan? I am. That's cool. <clears throat> I do like Sawyer. It just. Sometimes I feel like they can be a little slow. Do you feel like they're. You're happy with the? Um, this one's pretty old. I just, just spent a good amount of time trying to revive it. But, I don't know, backpack is not a Formula One race, so. <laughs> you have a backpack with me. Whoa! All right, I'm so tired today.
I hope you don't hate your life. That'd be really disappointing. Okay, we're going through But only based on Packers. It's, it's, Devin has this little thermometer, and uh, we got down to 19 degrees last night. So that's uh, colder than we were expecting. Here are my socks that, <laughs> that I got to put back on here in about half an hour <laughs> to go hike through the river. That is icy. Uh, my shoes also frozen. This is, this is not gonna be a fun morning. <laughs> and to add on top of that, we are going to have to be doing quite a few river crossings today. Later in the day, it'll be fine. But for the first hour, Devin, you looking forward to it? I'm so glad that we're doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has warmed up to a balmy 20. Should we see what it is now? Yeah. Let's see what it is. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, it's 20.2. It's yeah. going up. <laughs> that water's going to be so cold. It's going, oh my God. That's not going to be fun. Did you, these are weapons. You want to fight? <laughs> you have, oh man. <laughs> uh, it's getting ridiculous out here, folks. A little worried about this uh, water bag just being an ice bag this morning. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. there's still moving water in there. <laughs> I think it's also is part of it is just expectations. When you're going winter camping in the snow, you just you just like yeah, it's gonna be like 10 degrees. It's gonna yeah. be cold. You're in the desert, you feel like oh, the daytime high is like 55. It's playtime. And the nighttime, it just gets so cold. It's the temperature swings, I think. Yeah, it, it is. Because what, the high yesterday probably was like 55. Yeah. So to go from 55 to 19, as yeah. opposed to being like 34. <laughs> <laughs> to 12. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it was, like, it was, it was legit warm yesterday. Yeah. In, in the sun, it was, it was nice. Yeah, it was. 850 calorie bomb for breakfast. <laughs> I, I was surprised to hear you say that it got down to 19, because I was completely comfortable last nice. night and yet the other night two nights ago it was 21 <laughs> I was kind of a popsicle all night There's a lot of frost. Woohoo! Oh man. Well, let's shook off just a little bit. A little bit of frost. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did get. Devin. <laughs> I really could throw a snowball. 
It's a fart ball. <laughs> That's all my fart condensated. <laughs> Warm, dry shoes. I'm about to be a sad boy. Ice, icy wet socks. And it's still below freezing out here, I think. It's yeah. not, not a fun time. Yeah, I can really feel the Toes are screaming. Okay. <laughs> Toes are screaming. One of the most miserable things I've ever done backpacking is having to dunk my shoes in water that's just above freezing. I believe this is a form of torture. In order to de-ice them so I could even put them on. And uh, now we're hiking with wet shoes, wet socks. So uncomfortable. My toes are not happy. It is frozen <laughs> on the verge of frozen shoes yeah they I were cannot feel my toes no no not at all Cammy forest we just emerged into some sunlight and it makes such a massive difference it's still cold in here but just being able to get a little bit of radiant warmth feet are starting to thaw out a little bit, even though they're still cold and wet. But moving, I'm getting in the sun, I'm starting to feel like I'm alive again. That was a pretty brutal start to the day. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. go first one of the day surprised it took this long oh. all right you be my guinea pig nice all right. I just get speechless looking at, at that stuff and just respecting the history and how like important that is to to the tribes and that's ah, just so cool <laughs> is it common for you to see find petroglyphs pictographs and um i feel like i have a pretty keen eye for it with how much time i spend in the desert and knowing typically what what kind of areas it just had the 
I don't know, the attributes of a wall that uh, could have a, a, a panel on it. So mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah. That is, that's special. That's really special. That was a highlight for me. Good eye, man. So this whole area at the base of this cliff has some evidence that it's been, you know, lived in and occupied and, uh, you know, workings and things like that for, well, one, of course, just what's on the walls still. And I think that, you know, even stuff with like the rocks and the pebbles and maybe some potsherds that are here feels so lonely in many ways, but there, you know, there's people that have been making the life in these canyons for hundreds, if not thousands of years before us. And uh, I love seeing that ancient history and uh, being reminded that there's been people that have been living on this land for a really long time. And of course, if you do come across any of these places, it's really important to travel in here with respect, not be touching the panels and uh, obviously not defacing them in any sort of way. Um, but yeah, those, I mean, those. you see like one, but then there were like three or four others. Yeah. And just shows how much the wall of water coming down is wiping them away. Yeah, there was, there was probably many, many more here. Yeah. And they're just time and exposure to the elements has wiped them away. Yeah, it's actually pretty warm over here. Yeah. This is a big challenge. There's something really extra taxing about not being on a trail. And you're just constantly route finding, bushwhacking, picking your way through some pretty hard and nasty terrain. It just taxes you in an entirely different way. So even though today's mileage is gonna be around 11, 12 miles, which on a trail would be just fine. But in a place like this, I think we're gonna be absolutely destroyed by the end of the day. But the good news is we are approaching our exit. I can see the sand dune that we're gonna climb out of. That in itself is gonna be a challenge because we're gonna be going up a sand dune. That's never fun. But uh, that's our exit to get out of this canyon. Get clogged. Yeah. Well, use this one if you want. So I've been using this MSR Guardian for actually about a decade now. And uh, this is one of my most trusted pieces of gear. And it comes particularly in handy when I'm backpacking in places like this, where the water is very full of sediment. And as Devin is trying to back flush out his filter, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to take this, is because it's really good. It's got these two tubes, and it's, so it's simultaneously filtering water and spitting out dirty water at the same time. And that way the sediment just doesn't sit in the filter. And uh, yeah, it's just one of the most bomber pieces of equipment I have. It's obviously oversized for ultralight backpacking, but it's also trustworthy. Devin's already ahead and he's scouting the terrain. And this is one of our possible two exits. And uh, we didn't know if this one would go around the corner, another quarter mile of river. There's like a giant sand dune that comes down. But if we can get out on this, it means that we're exiting on rock instead of sand, and uh, that's much preferred. It goes. It goes. It'll go. There's at least 
some kind of footprint. Amazing. Well, let's follow it. That looks like a better exit than just going pure sand dune. So we're on our exit out this break in the wall. And what's really cool is to see that we are not the first humans to use this exit. So this has clearly been an area that's been used as a corridor, a travel corridor. And oftentimes people would mark these places of importance as where either the game would go and they could go on hunts or where they could physically just enter and exit these canyons. So. We've seen some treats today. I am stoked on this. Yeah. And there's a few more over here too. By the way, I'm on a precarious little ledge here, <laughs> but uh, there's another couple right there and we're making our way out of the canyon. Coming up out of the sand dune is actually far more interesting than I expected it to be. There's so many cool textures in the sand and the way the light is hitting it, it's so soft and the orange, the quality of the sand color is unlike anything I've ever seen before. But one of the things that I love most, I think is just seeing all the little details of the critters that are out here. I think there's coyote footprints right here, followed by something else that's really small. I don't even know what it would be, but some little furry little four-legged creature, as well as just like snakes and insects and beetles. The desert is a magical place. I love being out here and it has far more life than we ever really give it credit for. And I love being able to see the evidence right here in a place like this. This is special. Since our exit, just been crossing open desert. There's no trail, just walking through the sand. And our goal is to get up into this bit of red rock up here. And hopefully at least there's water in some of these potholes or holding tanks, natural just shady recesses that hold water. That would be ideal, or it's gonna be a dry, thirsty night tonight. And we are on our way to a special feature that's kind of hidden out here in the desert. Something I've been very excited to see for a long time. carrying a bunch of water now. You can kind of hear it sloshing around in my pack, but we're dry camping tonight and we won't have any more water access until we finish. Yeah, that we know of. Guess we could get lucky, but I got 10 pounds of water in my pack right now. I'm feeling it. Dev and I have made a lot of progress since being way out there 
And uh, it's a lot more up. It's very deceptive, and we're carrying all this water. How are you feeling? <laughs> uh, I'm ready to take my pack off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm good. So. I'm okay. It's just, I'm tired. Today, today has been a hard day. It's been a big day. Bigger than yesterday. Oh, yeah, by a lot. By a lot, so. This is wild. We have made it to the Cosmic Ashtray, which is truly one of the coolest, weirdest little spots out in this desert. And uh, Devin and I have both been eyeing up coming out here for a long time. And uh, it's just a strange place. And it's this big, massive bowl full of vibrantly orange sand. And I'm stoked to be... <coughs> oh, I got a little almond stuck in my throat. And I'm stoked to be here. Woo! Let's go poke around. Ball, draw, that's a bird skull. There's some sort of ancient alien coming out of the sand. Weird. Good thing that's grippy. It's just such a weird feature. You don't really see anything like it. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it at least. Uh, but this desert is magical and it's just full of gems. Devin and I have had a really awesome time here and we got a boogie. It's getting late. Today's been a massive day and uh, the light is definitely fading and we've got to go find camp. So goodbye, Cosmic Ashtray. It's been fun. Is it a sketch? No, not at all. We uh, are just now setting up camp. It's been a massive day. And uh, we ended up just posting up here on some slick rock, just some flat slick rock. Not exactly where we intended, but it works. The biggest trick is just putting up a uh, trekking pole tent that needs stakes for tension uh, into a slick rock ground. So getting a little creative here, but it's working. I'm gonna make some dinner because I am starving. It's only seven o'clock, but I'm ready for bed. I think I'm gonna sleep good. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty intense on the feet experience. Yeah. You know, this was like so bushwhacky, so much time in and out of water. That definitely made it, it's way harder than like a normal backpacking trip. Yeah, several times today I kept thinking to myself, man, I wish I could just be in the forest for a minute. <laughs> Unlike... Can I just do a regular trip? A groomed national forest yeah. trail. 
can I do that? <laughs> but fun to have somebody to go on a beatdown trip with. Sorry, my my dogs are all over in your frame, are they not? Come on, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make cinema here. Hey. Those were for free. <laughs> Sticky teriyaki tonight for me. It's gonna be good. trust you again. <laughs> Being on the slick rock is fun. That oh, honey bun is cold. Cold honey buns? You need, a, you need hot honey buns. Oh, I really don't want to eat this right now. <laughs> no. Well, that just doesn't sound very appetizing. What is it? Oatmeal. Yeah. Peaches and cream. Peaches and cream. Pretty wonderful night out in the open. A little bit tricky getting my tent to set up, but it worked, I figured it out. And now we're finishing off our trip with a, a much shorter day, but it doesn't mean there won't be excitement. We are in search of a slot canyon here in the desert. So it's one of my favorite things in these deserts is intricate little slot canyons. We're gonna go find one. Kind of getting cliffed out here. I've come up over here. So we're at an interesting part of the trip. We've come across a slot canyon here. We knew it was here, and this is part of what we wanted to uh, get in and, and explore. Although the entrance is kind of sketchy. It's basically this big slide, and once we're in, it's going to be really, really hard to get ourselves out. And then we've got this slot of, we have some beta that it should go, but also like, is there water down in any of the pools that wasn't there before or anything that might really change the game for us. Devin is willing to take the slide and do a little exploration and there's a good chance I'm gonna be following right behind him.
Okay, so far isn't as steep as as you think. No, Devin, you need to say the uh, it's this is wild. This is like vertical limit, bruh. <laughs> you got nitroglycerin in your pack? Oh yeah. Okay. That's the commit. Dang. <laughs> All right. You're in. <laughs> My big fear is that there's going to be a big pool of water in one of these on our way out. But, ooh, look at this. Oh, I love these slot canyons. Use your ninja skills. Look at that booty. Woo! <laughs> I got it. Beach whale works. It's a classic move. Yeah. Same thing. It's like the death portal. Okay. Doesn't have anything to do with how much it floods. This? Yeah. Ah! You're on the other side. How big is it? So drop. proper slot down here. Lots of down climbing, lots of these little boulder constrictions, and uh, Kevin and I are having a fun time. It's really helpful to have two people in a place like this. You keep passing packs back and forth. Well, Devin and I have made it. We did our about a 28 mile loop, which was just awesome. It was so cool. And each day had 
really unique and cool features. Just kept changing and there's always treasures to be had here in this canyon. So I'm really stoked on it. And uh, big shout out to Devin for joining me on this, or actually kind of putting this all together. And if you don't know Devin, get in here, Devin. Brother. If you don't know Devin, you gotta <laughs> make sure you give him a follow. He's Backcountry Exposure here on YouTube. And uh, dude, that was killer. My feet hurt. Mine too. <laughs> I'm ready to be done. Let's go eat some pizza. Let's go eat some pizza. Nice yeah. work. Thanks for watching. See you later, everybody.